Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be going over my duty belt setup. The setup that I'm about to show you, it might work for you. It may not work for you. A little bit about my background. I have over 24 years of combined law enforcement, private security, and private investigation experience. I have worn a duty belt, just like one of these for a very long time. I'm also a licensed BSIS firearm instructor. I can qualify private security professionals in the state of California. I'm also a California POST, that stands for the Peace Officer Standards of Training Instructor. I can qualify sworn law enforcement officers with red dot systems, rifles, pistols, and shotguns. So that's my background. If you have your own YouTube channel, these duty belt videos are very popular. I highly recommend that you do one of these videos. A lot of new people in the private security industry, they want to know how to arrange their duty belt, what should they get. So I highly recommend you do that. Also, I'm always looking for sponsors. If you have any equipment for me to show on camera, if you have any type of, of duty gear that you want me to show on camera, anything, you can send it to me and you can also sponsor these videos as well. So without further ado, let's talk about my duty belt setup. So my belt, which is from here, to all the way here, just the belt, nothing on it. The manufacturer is Gold and Goodrich. Gold and Goodrich, they are a very good brand. A lot of these brands that I mentioned, they will last you 10 years and more. My last duty belt setup, I've had for over 10 years. I've seen some officers have them for 20 years. If you buy a good belt one time, you buy good equipment one time, you don't have to buy it a second time or a third time in a short amount of time. Try not to try not to buy these these Chinese knockoffs. They are not gonna they're not gonna last. Okay, they're they're not gonna last. Okay, so first things first. I have my Safari Land holster. This accommodates my pepper spray. This pepper spray that I use and that I trust is Saber Red. This one right here. This is 1.5 ounces. Okay, I've used this in real life. Also, first defense. I've used first defense in real life, and it's it's worked. Okay. This is part of the Safari Land QLS system. What this mount allows me to do is have a holster that has a fork attachment to it. This is the QLS fork attachment, and it allows me to connect any one of my holsters to any belt that has this adapter system to it. Let's check this out. I love that sound. It just sounds just convincing. Right now running a long shadow holster setup. This is the L2 Credone. I've used this for about two years. If you're new to holsters, when in doubt, go with the Safari Land. I highly recommend a, a triple retention holster. You can, get a, you can get away with the level two. Um, I feel comfortable with the level two holster because of the firearm that I carry, and I'll talk about that very shortly. I also have a long shadow holster tourniquet holder right here. I'm able to attach a cat tourniquet or anything similar. The weapon that I'm using right now, it's a Staccato P. This is not my personal weapon. This is actually on loan from Staccato. I'm running a Surefire 300. This is the my duty light. And I'm running a loophole Delta Point Pro 2.5 MOA. Okay. The barrel length is about 4.5 inches. This is your Staccato P. It will hold 20 rounds. 20 rounds plus one, one in the chamber. This is not on the California roster. You can get it off roster at a higher price. Okay. So let me put this got back in the holster. Get a click. Okay, next, I have my flashlight attachment. And this is from, I actually bought this on e Eastacy or Estacy. And I'm running a Surefire, I'm sorry, Streamlight ProTac HL USB. It allows me to charge this flashlight whenever I have access to a USB cord 
it's it, it's it's awesome i don't have to change batteries and if i wanted to use the cr123s i can use that as well but i'll use rechargeable okay my handcuff case it's a gold and gold rich case by the way this design is called basket weave here's my hooks i'm running peerless okay i've had this literally since I marked, I don't know if you guys can see it, since 2003. I marked my equipment with the date that I put it into service. So this is February of 03. Awesome handcuffs. I seen the hinges here, or the chain link break with a 28 year veteran. He had it for 28 years and it finally broke. So they, they will break, but it's just a matter of time. These are extremely dependable. I've used this in all types of, of circumstances. Make sure that you guys oil them. Make sure that you label them because if you are a hands-on security company in an arrest situation if, if you're always arresting people you're switching on handcuffs yours will get stolen yours will get i'm sorry yours will get lost eventually so i've had this since i was a actually a police explorer and then a security officer and then i'm using it in my law enforcement profession at this time just in case i get a fairly large individual okay i can link up both of the cuffs just like this. Right. If somebody's arms don't reach that far behind them, okay, so, so with the larger individuals, they'll stop around here. Some people might even have a shoulder injury. You don't want to aggravate the injury by having two handcuffs linked together. They'll be restrained to. They'll be restrained up to here. They have a lot, a lot more freedom in their movement. Okay. Without that, they'll be over here. This is a radio holder. I highly recommend that you have a swivel radio holder. This is called, uh, the brand is Aker, A-K-E-R. They've been around for a very long time. Um, they make the cheaper version of leather gear, but hey, I've had Aker gear that usually the last like seven years, six years, just depends on, on how you treat your equipment. Um, and then I have this retention strap right here to hold my radio into place. Taser seven. This is the newest taser that's out there. It actually it allows you to not have to reload after every time that you, that you fire. Um, double magazine holder, okay? Um, this is Safari Land again. Double magazine holder, accommodate my large magazines. Safari Land, that's just, that's just the way to go right now. Other, holst, other holders, you can only put your magazines one way. You can't, they don't go forward. If that's the case, remember, bullet, faces the belly button. Bullets, this bullet faces the belt buckle. It will help accommodate faster reloads. Chrome belt buckle, I rather, I would rather have a black one. It's just a little bit too shiny for me. And then this is my baton ring. This accommodates my 28 inch straight stick baton. Guys and gals, this baton is literally a fight stopper. I've never lost in any type of physical confrontation with this baton. This literally stops the fight. It's made out of diamond wood. Unfortunately, the diamond wood factory burned down some years ago, but this, I mean, looking through hell and back, um, this is a, a form of, of laminated wood and it, it hits hard. Okay, it hits very hard. I've worked for private security companies. They do not allow you to carry this because it looks too scary. It looks, they don't they don't want you to have that. Unfortunately, if that's the case, then you're gonna be stuck with a classful baton. There's a new baton, a newer baton out there I'm seeing. It's called the RSB or RVS. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I've seen that. I just don't remember what the name was because I don't have the baton. That baton will hit hard. Some of you are wondering about my body armor. Where is it? So I'll pull on the screen right now. This is the carrier that I carry on duty. This is a Safari Land ex external carrier. The ballistic vests are rated level 3A. Personally, I prefer a level 2 just because it's a little bit more comfortable, a little bit less weight, and it offers very similar protection. However, where I work at, that's what I'm issued. So that is what I have to carry. The beauty of having the external vest and the beauty of having almost all of my equipment on my belt 
rather than on the best is because the type of environment that I, that I work in. I live and I work in the desert. Sometimes it gets 122 degrees in August. I'm not even kidding. You can't make this stuff up, guys. It gets extremely hot, uncomfortable. It, there's all these canals all over the place and it becomes extremely humid as well. This is one way that I can easily cool off. So I could just take out my carrier. If something happens in that split second, okay, I have, I have all the equipment that I need in order to get the job done, except the external carrier. I have everything. I have less lethal and I have lethal on my belt. I have my handcuff key, I have my baton, I have everything, just in case I need to get somewhere real quick. So it's, it's up to you. If you wanna wear it all the time, might as well just wear a concealable body armor. But I like the external vest, I could take it off and I could cool off. So now I'm gonna show you how this belt should look like on your body, okay? You put it on, obviously, and like, I don't have, I mean, I'm not the, the fittest person in the world. I don't have a size 100 waist. So I have to be a little bit creative on where I arrange my equipment. So my pepper spray is going to be in front of the gun. And it was very difficult fitting it in this area, but eventually I got it in. So now what I have to do is I need to put the belt underneath. And you're actually going to have to force that belt through the loop portion of your pepper spray holster. Well, that's what I have to do. And it'll finally go through, okay? And guys, my pet pee is a messed up gig line, okay? Look, right here is my pant seam. You see that line right there? It needs to line up with this part of the buckle, okay? It looks a lot more sharper. It looks a lot more sharper like this, neater, more professional. Obviously, if you're working hard and during the middle of shift, your gig line will be off, but let's at least start your gig line off that way. Your uniform shirt, where you see a line in the collar, everything should just line up, okay? If, if, you, if you have a class A, B shirt, okay, that seam of that shirt, that line should, should, should match up with the edge of the buckle just like that. For the keepers, what you wanna do, is place them where the belt loops are at. So look, if right here is a is the belt loop of your pants, okay, you want to put the the keeper right here, so it doesn't it doesn't shift your belt all the way left or all the way right. So it'll stay as centered as possible. Um, if you put anything in front of your holster, make sure that it does not interfere with the function of the holster. So here I'm able to draw my firearm, okay, without any type of obstruction at all. Some people will actually put this, this pepper spray or a flashlight, they'll put it right here. Okay, the problem with that is that when you go to draw your firearm, you're gonna grab a piece of the flashlight or a piece of the pepper spray holster. You don't wanna do that. So in order to prevent that, I recommend that you put a keeper between your holster, your gun holster, and your pepper spray holder or your flashlight holder. Put, put a keeper in between, okay? Now with this flashlight holster that I have, I don't have to do that because of the way that the flashlight holder designed, but I'm telling you some, even baton, some of you carry baton right here, right here. Um, it can interfere with the draw because you might actually end up grabbing a portion of the baton, portion of the flashlight, portion of your pepper spray holder. It's, it's happened to me many times. Magazine pouches go on the opposite side of your gun for a couple of reasons. Main reason, well, the main reason is you have a greater chance of throwing out your back. You want to have as much weight evenly distributed as possible, and that's why I have it here. Also, on a magazine change, it's just a lot more easier. Okay, it's a lot more easier to draw just like this. Now, if this magazine holster was here, okay, you'd have to reach around here. Look at, reach around here, and then it, your angle is a lot different. You see that? So here, this is more natural. Okay, more natural than it's over here. Here. Okay, you're gonna have to go like this, or move it 
this way a little bit to go in. It's a lot slower, okay? Um, I highly recommend that you go with an open top magazine holder. This is an open top magazine holder, meaning that there's no flap. Now, a lot of security officers you'll see out there, they'll have the flap. Okay, that's that's some old school stuff, guys. These 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 open top holders, holsters for your magazines, um, they're modernized and they actually retain the magazines very very good. You, this will not come out. I could go up a pair of uh, flight of stairs. I could climb fences. Everything. This is not going to fall out. In the old days, when you had the magazine flap, okay, you just hit that flap. There's no retention. The magazine falls out. Don't don't get that. Also, some of you guys position your magazines pouches um, horizontal. Okay, so the pouches like this. It's gonna. It will take you longer to draw. If you don't believe me, test it out. So try open top vertical compared to what you have now with the with with the flaps i mean usually if you're carrying like this you normally have the the, fla the um the flaps that go over the magazine it, it will take you longer and I, I i still see that so get the open top um baton okay, if you do choose to choose a straight stick baton it should go on your support side if your gun is on the, your right side then your baton should be going on your left vice versa obviously you do whatever you want so the the reason why i like my baton here is this if somebody's coming near me look at everywhere that they're going they're coming near me like this i keep orienting the top of my baton towards them so if they end up rushing me okay i i can hit them with this but this is this is always facing the threat okay he comes around here okay now obviously if i know he's gonna attack me i'll have the baton out already and it's and it's it's time to go. Taser, I put that in back of my baton. Um, the the reason why I do that is because this baton would be all the way to my rear here. I, I wouldn't have as much control um, of, of the baton. I can't swivel it as easy if if I have an obstruction. Radio, radio, I'll put right in back of the taser. Let's see what else. Um, handcuff. The, the cuffs don't put that along your your spine right here guys i put it kind of like on the side so it evens out the weight okay don't put it along your spine flashlight i've seen people put a baton here they put a flashlight here it's 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 totally up to you um if i had room on this side for the flashlight i would definitely do that i would but i just i've just been running out of room um it's up to you if you want to carry your baton but if you're going to carry a baton right here in back of your firearm, at least a collapsible. Okay, I just like the baton right here because I'm always assessing somebody. I'm always assessing the threat, and I always have this available because there's a greater chance that I'm going to use a baton than a firearm. I mean, your chances of using a firearm are very slim. Gloves. These gloves, I'm, I'm going to have to retire these. They're full of blood from an incident not too long ago. Um... I've seen some of you actually have, it's like a clip, it clips onto the glove and then you have it hanging from your belt. I, I'm trying to look for something like that and I think I'm gonna start wearing my equipment just like that. Cause think about this, like this glove, I mean, it has blood on it. It, it doesn't make any sense for me to stick it back in my pocket. And I, I normally will carry the glove right here. Okay. or. Some of my pants have a side pocket. That's where I'll carry the gloves. So that's all I have to get today, you guys. If you have any questions, concerns, if you want to know more about the equipment that I have, let me know. I'd like to know how do you arrange your equipment.